Good evening, and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savitri, with our brother Oliver. We are possibly concluding yes. Cantor 10, Kingdoms and Godheads of the Little Mind today. We're beginning on the last line of page 257. And I wanted to suggest something to all of us and to all our listeners. You know, Savitri is so sacred. Mother wrote to me three times on Savitri. And in our last session, just to point out a couple of things <clears throat> that we could meditate on for hours, or we may find, when all the rest has failed, hid in ourselves the key of perfect change. And then again, in the bright kingdoms of the rising sun, all is a birth into a power of light. And again, on the next page, um, mm. the truth is known only when all oh, is seen. See, we can meditate on these lines for hours. Yes. So tonight we have an extraordinary beginning line. Our ignorance is wisdom's chrysalis. Yes. Just imagine that. Just since you mentioned it, uh, uh, meditating upon the lines, you know, we have the yoga of the Upanishads and the Vedas and often people ask how to follow this yoga. The answer that comes spontaneously to me, which I have, and Shubhinda himself has actually spoken about it, is by meditating upon the lines till the truth is revealed. It's not by a scholarly understanding but by meditating upon the lines. So, yes. so Shurbindo's famous experience of Alipur jail, Vasudevam Sarvamiti Samahatma Chadurlabha, he actually used to, he describes it, walking from the cow shed to the jail, where people were making things. So he would walk up and down because the jailer, he says that it was the play of Vasudeva and he had given him permission to walk for some time outside the jail. And he would walk and these two slokas from the Isha Upanishad. Yes means Sarvani Bhutani, that one and the other one. Tatrako Mohaka Shokai Kattva He would recite it within himself and walk up and down. And of course he had the great vision of the one divine yes. everywhere. So um, that is the path which has been left for us. And there is a difference between the uh, Vani of the Rishi and the uh, normal yogic philosophy. Chiyobindo, I read today a very beautiful passage in Bengali writing. He says the Rishi is not a saint or a holy man. He is somebody who has the mantra who has ascended to the higher planes of consciousness. And therefore at whatever level he has the mantra, his speech, his, uh, his writing, it's, it's mantric. It carries that ring of the higher truth. And even when he is not aware, eternity speaks through him. And he tells it in reference to the Bande Matram, you know, where he says that Bankim Chandra had the mantra. So he was a Rishi. That's why he uses the word Rishi Bankim Chandra. Because he had that mantra somewhere the higher planes were using him as an instrument. He, he also speaks in, uh, in the section on knowledge that he has heard people who were basically ignorant. Yes. Speaking with a higher knowledge yes. that it was impossible for most people. And the mother gives a concrete example of this, what can happen by the divine touch with reference to a girl who could speak marvelous things when she was in that state. But once she was out of that state, she was just like anyone else. Of course, in this yoga, because it's a yoga of transformation, that state has to be continuous and conterminous with life. And uh, we are so privileged that Sri is a rishi and a yogi. It's a very rare combination. Not all yogis are rishis and not all rishis are yogis. <laughs> this is... <laughs> and Mother speaks also about how much Sri Aurobindo walked yes. doing his yes. sadhana. Yes. And so in the jail also he walked. 
and uh, his method. Yes. And we know the story of the room overlooking the great tree. Yes. In which his footprints wore into the wooden floor. Yes. He walked so much. Uh, you know, in Bodh Gaya, where Buddha had done his yoga, you actually have the footprints of Buddha walking along a certain path. But there's a difference. They preserved it. Yeah. And we just covered it. Yeah. <laughs> so we put a little holy of that. Of course, at least we could have literally walked. <laughs> oh. So we'll continue further. It's a very beautiful line. We can continue with one line just above that. Mm. One day the face must burn out through the mask. So oh. this uh, mind is a mask. But what stands behind it is super mind. And look at this line, as you said, this one line is so powerful. It gives hope. Yeah. It will. He is giving us an assurance that is bound to. And that's why Shubhendra said super mind is inevitable in the very logic of things. Even if nothing was to happen, still it would manifest. The only difference is that by yoga we can make it happen in a thousand years what would take millions of years. Our ignorance is wisdom's chrysalis. So chrysalis is normally a word used for this, you know, like the pupa of a butterfly. So it's mm -hmm. something in external coat. And uh, it, it covers and it constricts. So chrysalis does two things. One, it secretly is nurturing the butterfly, but the caterpillar is thinking that it is constricting it. And the mother speaks of this, you know, when she speaks about if only man could consent to be spiritualized. Yeah. That he is feeling a pressure from all directions and it is also because a secret yoga is going on. Unfortunately, he is still falling back on the old solutions, which includes the lawyer, the doctor, the policeman <laughs> and the politician. <laughs> Whereas hid deep in us the key of perfect change. It's a chrysalis, but what is holding inside within and preparing it to emerge, that is the truth. Our error weds new knowledge on its way. This is how the journey goes. Another place Shobindu writes in Savitri, our error, our, our errors are his steps upon the his way. Footsteps. Footsteps upon the yes. way. So we should not be afraid or worried. At one place, mother speaks of this, you know. She says, because of the um, fear of error, we stop doing any action. Because we may fall, we may make mistakes. But this is how the journey as we proceed through the tangled anarchy of life, through works where we do not know, we are in ignorance, slowly knowledge dawns. So the process is being described that as we proceed, knowledge comes and we grow in consciousness. It's not like today I am ignorant, tomorrow I am all knowing. It doesn't work like that. Because it's like a blinding light. So our error weds new knowledge on its way its darkness is a blackened knot of light. Thought dances hand in hand with nescience what a light. on the grey road that winds towards the sun. What more, you know, assurance. Yeah. A grey road though. Yes. And thought, which is actually the birth of thought is from the highest realms. And yet it is Dancing with nescience on the way. Look at the, it's not just, you know, it's dancing, it's happy. It's happy to be with nescience. It doesn't, and it calls it knowledge. And yet in this dance, there is something else which is guiding its steps. Through the grey road, it's moving yes. towards the sun. It's so picturesque. Someone could possibly, you know, make a painting out of it. <laughs> Even while her fingers fumble at the knots, which bind them to their strange companionship into the moments of their married strife. Sometimes break flashes of the enlightening fire. So they are married and they are quarreling like <laughs> most people and they are trying to open the knot. <laughs> it's a whole image. It is. It's a, and they are not able to open it yet. In the course of the journey, time to time, there are flashes which are coming and they are the ones which are burning the knot. 
and this thought and nescience they are thinking it's their effort yeah. it's trying but flashes are coming and the enlightening fire. enlightening fire even now great thoughts are here that walk alone armed they have come with the infallible word in an investiture of intuitive light that is a sanction from the eyes of god so often when people say oh nobody understands what i am feeling what i am thinking i said good good sign <laughs> it's not the common lot <laughs> whatever else it is but at least it's your thoughts are not like everybody else's that's why and uh, someone once told me that you know it is so difficult to understand i said that is an evidence that he is divine <laughs> because divine is so difficult to understand but this is a complexity you try reducing divine to any simple formula and if you walk with open eyes you will see it doesn't work you will be forced to conclude there is something which i don't understand so <laughs> that is a proof that he is divine so he is talking of great solitary thoughts that walk alone and a few of them i have here uh where he speaks of the overmental influence in certain poets yes and he quotes shakespeare yes in the dark backward and the bism of time he quotes milton these thoughts that wander through eternity oh. and wordsworth the winds come to me from the fields of sleep just imagine this oh. so marvelous this so is. there are these great thoughts yeah, yeah. <sighs> announcers of a distant truth they flame arriving from the rim of eternity so rim of eternity is of course the over mind uh, so they come from there and they enter into the human brain even now and they come announcing the future if fire shall come out of the infinitudes a greater gnosis shall regard the world crossing out of some far omniscience on lustrous seas from the still wrapped alone mm. to illumine the deep heart of self and things so you see it's a whole journey which is describing from the little mind its highest steps then how shubhendra reveals how it is an ignorance it has its own field of action yet it is an ignorance it cannot comprehend the whole it sees things in bits and parts and then he speaking of the greater noises which can reveal the heart of things yes the secret self of things yes. only in that light that one can truly know a timeless knowledge it shall bring to mind its aim to life to ignorance it's close this is the final remedy all other remedies are uh, intermediaries so but some people like intermediaries it's okay to use intermediaries but it is dangerous to think that they are final remedies that's the only thing to ignorance it's close it's only with the coming of the super mind because there all possibility of error is eliminated even in the over mind gnosis there is a possibility of error however small that's why shubhendu asked the mother to dissolve that creation yes and now with this he describes what lies beyond as if there is a glance from the level of the mind to what is above it then he will enter that world and describe it so savitri is really it's like a journey traveler of the worlds so standing on the mind he is looking at what is beyond and look at the description above in a high breathless stratosphere we know that when we go out of earth there is actually a stratosphere <laughs> and he is describing that where the earth atmosphere is no more it's very very mild and the beauty of this is that the gravitational pull becomes much less so the moment you start ascending into these realms the pull of earth nature the downward pull it becomes markedly less and he calls it breathless yes stratosphere the earth atmosphere which we breathe this poison that is it cannot reach overshadowing the dwarfish trinity which we have just read the threefold little mind lived 
aspirants to a limitless beyond. We have these uh, vision of Dante, yes. uh, where it speaks of yes. these tires, uh, planes of consciousness, where people are sitting on mountain tops, and we have a very remarkable vision of Sri Ramakrishna, where he uh, sees a little child uh, come, and there is a sage who is meditating on one of these higher planes of consciousness. And he goes and pulls him, this child pulls him, come down, come down. So the sage opens his eyes and then he said, okay. And you know who is the child and who is the sage on the higher levels? The child is Sri Ramakrishna and the sage is Swami Vivekananda. <laughs> yes, look, but child is, of course, the child, this is a divine child, pulls him. So there are beings in these higher worlds who are meditating aspirants to the beyond. But sometimes they come back. Because they are moved by the impulse to save mankind. That's why you see in Swami Vivekananda's that refrain that till a single person is suffering in hell, I would continue to labor and suffer. Yes. Because he came down with that whole impulsion. Captives of space walled by the limiting heavens in the unceasing circuit of the hours yearning for the straight paths of eternity so still there is space and time in these higher realms, but a totally changed sense of space and time. Eternal is much later and they are looking for the straight path. And from their high station, look down on this world to sun gaze, demons witnessing all that is. That's very powerful. Very powerful. So these demons, de this is not demon, of course, I'm, I'm no. sure. We, <laughs> the demon is supernatural beings, celestial beings. It's used D-A-E. I think D -A -E it's a Greek -E word. rather than D-E-M. Yeah. yeah, so they are watching from above this earthly yes. race. You know, that vision of Ishadi where she sees Sri uh, going in a chariot along with Dilip Kumar Roy and uh, I think was it Nirodha and one more person. Uh, so Pavitrada and she asks that what is it that I saw? He said yes they are with me time to time they go out to see the condition of the world. <laughs> so she says even my mama <laughs> she couldn't believe it because Dilip Kumar Roy had these issues and he had left and gone. He said yes he is with me. It doesn't matter. Do you remember the line where Sri Aurobindo speaks about two beings accompanying us on our journey on earth? It's in Savitri and I don't... Yes, yes, yes. I don't recall... Yeah, it will come, suddenly it will come. Yeah. But there is also a description of the mother of Pavitra whom she saw sitting in a great vehicle and going at night to see the world. And when Pavitra da fell sick and eventually he left his body, she says that uh, there is a conversation, long conversation. And this, then she says that he took upon himself a whole lot of problems of the world. That's why he went through so much outward suffering. Often people ask, how come, you know, some of the disciples, they go through so much of difficulties and challenges, precisely because they are sure been those disciples. <laughs> They are not here to do some easy task. Nishikanto. Nishikanto. So, with Pavitra Das, she actually mentions that I saw him go in a great vehicle. He would see the condition of the world and take upon himself a lot of suffering of others because he had initially a very Buddhist leaning. And so, he went through all this, you know, cancer of the bone. Who are these two Sangha's demons? I mean... No, these are not... Two, I mean, not two in sense of quantitative two, in all likelihood. So, this is most likely referring to the two eyes. So, the, the look of these beings was like celestial beings, gods watching upon earth. Otherwise, there are supposed to be seven archangels in the Christian tradition. But yes. that comes, archangels but come sun later. gaze, able to look into the sun. Yeah, yeah. In, or moved by the sight of the sun. Their ops are filled with that sight. Their gaze is like the sun's gaze. Yes, like the sun's gaze. And yet they are still living in higher space. A power to uplift the laggard world. So have, they have this power also to help mm. mankind. So people who often ask, you know, what about Mother and Shiva Even Vivekananda and those beings, 
they are there they are watching over us and i remember very simply as children we were told our parents when they pass away they watch over us <laughs> and of course they are very they they parents are generally ignorant beings who have gone past so they are being so watch over us and again isha this vision where she sees shurbindo and this is in 90s and she says i know india is going down it'll go down 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 then i am going to uplift the country so they are, they have not like mothers again that the assurance that you will never leave the earth atmosphere till your work is accomplished that is the message she gave yes. on i think 12th december or you know toward the end of after a week of sure windows physical withdrawal that lord thou hast given us the assurance that you will remain here intact not only as a consciousness that sees and understand but as a dynamic power so from these higher planes they could be in any of these higher planes and watch over earth life and help the legard trees even amrita there is the story that when he left the body um he told mother that my soul will be with you but leave my vital free to help others mm. yes and for him mother had said he is the last one and only manager you know that yeah. amrita is the one and only manager of the ashram there is there never will be a, another manager of the ashram <laughs> so these are the beings who watch and help imperious rode a huge high winged life thought look this is the vedic maruts mm. high winged life thoughts yes you can see some of the vedic gods actually working together in tandem high winged life thought unwont to tread the firm unchanging soil unwont it is not accustomed to this you know uh this kind of soil in which we live that's why beings of this world find very difficult to understand mental things and so called practical things and managing worldly affairs because <laughs> they feel themselves a stranger in this field so unwont it's a very archaic word actually yes yes an unchanging soil yeah, unchanging on this soil they cannot which is rigid hard even the divine mother once when she is sitting and all these children are sitting in front of her she one day contemplates why i am pouring so much why they are so unconscious yeah. so she enters into their consciousness and she she goes into very rigid dark realm and she says then at the end of course bottom rock she touches the spring yeah of new creation and then she says that she went through that a narrow passage most stifling i might remember it yes it's 1958 at the, yeah at the, at the very bottom. bottom of the inconscience most hard and rigid and narrow and stifling i struck upon an almighty spring that cast me up forthwith into a formless limitless void vibrating with the seeds of a new world yes so so this is the because it's a different world whereas human beings live in that yes we think it is the best thing to do yeah. you know spirituality is all for retirement <laughs> then the only place you can apply is yamraj probably he will also not take the application he will say my yamdoot have already not listed you <laughs> too late after all he is also a god he has his maryada yamraj doesn't go to pick up anyone and everyone by the way you know in savitri's case this is the story goes like that that first the yamdoots go they look at savitri they run away they say we can't go near this guy whose name check your roster so then he say no no his time has come i ah, we can't go so then yamraj himself comes because he knows he can't uh, they can't take so you know <laughs> retirement time is only for <laughs> applying there accustomed to a blue infinity so on one side it's not accustomed to this life here but so accustomed to that world yeah it's soars in that world so naturally so freely remember that poem of shurbindo the blue bird i am the god of yes, bird in his yes. blue divinely high and clear and she is singing the note yes and uh, that's why you know you see another line in savitri eternity speaks none hears its word the voice in her shall speak the soul obey so slowly it is now that people are beginning to reach your window that understanding is coming but during that time because he brought the truth from such a high plane 
that is the sign of the divine consciousness such a powerful truth in its completeness and look at the world in 1950 yes and now it planed in sunlit sky and starlit air even at night planed planed this high wing thought they are moving in that realm it saw afar the unreached immortals home so it is a privy to these truths including yes. the home this is where possibly some of the seers stood and from there they saw afar that's how yagnaval cries out hiranmayena patrena satyasya bhitam mukham tattvam pushan pavranu satya dharma itishta i want to know the law of truth because you could see from afar that there is a truth there but it's covered with a golden lid but in this kingdom of and godheads of the little mind they are looking up yes now now because he is now concluding yes. it that from yes. the highest reaches you can see yes. it and heard afar the voices of the gods iconoclast and shatterer of times forth so one of the signs is they they are not trapped in tradition look at if you read through sami vivekananda's writings you know often a traditional hindu thought you serve sami vivekananda if you read through the writings he has broken apart he releases the spirit of hinduism which is the pure vedanta but he breaks all the forms in which it is caught iconoclast because it shatters mm-hmm. those forms mm-hmm. narrow forms limited forms you can't tie them to a religion you see guru nanak when he is going now people make a religion out of everything it's a different story so it seems that he slept uh, he was sleeping and that time you know all this muslim invasion all this was going on so one of them told hey you don't sleep like this your feet are turned towards mecca he said oh is it so which way is mecca he said that way is mecca so he says okay i'll turn my feet so when he turns the feet this man starts seeing mecca there so wherever direction it's a story yes, yes. he turns his feet he sees mecca there that's why when uh, kabir is asked about tirtha going to holy places he says where i step my feet that is a tirtha yes jahan pag dharu so tirath because i am calling the lord's name tirath is not just a and that's why he had put in his will I don't want to die in Varanasi. You know where he chose to die? He chose to die in place called Magai, where it is told that if you die, you will straight go to hell. He chose to do iconoclast. It is said that to his guru Dharmdas, he went one day, and the guru was indulging in all this puja, and Kabir goes and throws them away, all of them. These beings are very different. I mean, Champaklalji, when he went to this place. Oh. Uh, I won't name the place where Shobindu's relics are there and all the pictures of all the gods and goddesses as he entered the place. He started picking up and throwing those photographs. It's a real story. He just started picking up because it's not about gods and goddesses. When you have the supreme, where are you distracted? When he went to Hong Kong, they were singing bhajans, and suddenly he gets up and started walking out. So Gerard was telling me he was with him. Mm. so he ran out maharaj where are you going no he is not speaking anything he is going <laughs> he catches all of me by then all of them are coming and running and saying but we were singing bhajans to god <laughs> so <laughs> champakla ji asks a note right there not the god that i know vital gods <laughs> they are shatterer of all these limited form but they release the truth inside when mother speaks of krishna she is not speaking of the krishna of the krishna janmashtami and the vaishnavites she is speaking of krishna as he is in his reality yes. when they speak of christ it's not the christ who is crucified in the church mm-hmm. but the truth of christ that is how they are iconoclast there is a line where he says i am the lord thy god thou shalt not have strange gods before me yes and of course this is one level they have gone much higher but in the very first few steps one could see from here that these beings because they are living in a very large and free air iconoclast and shatterer of times forts overleaping limit and exceeding norm it lit the thoughts that glow through the centuries and moved to acts of superhuman force 
So these beings bring changes, revolutionary changes. That is their work. They can start with anything, but they will change the whole face of things. Like Sri Ramakrishna in his own life showed that how, whether you take this approach or that approach, something which we have read in the Vedas. But he showed that you can practice, if you have that true, sincere aspiration, you will arrive at the same divine. So they come to shatter the fixed norms, formulas and you know ways of thinking. And I have seen recently on YouTube um, <coughs> early videos of Raman Maharshi. Mm. And there are so many new things coming out on YouTube. Yes, Vivekananda, yes, 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 yes. All of them, invariably, because they, they have come, they have seen something much afar and they want to manifest that. Yes. They are born to manifest that. And so they go beyond the frame of time in which, uh, you know, tradition has captured God and infinity mm. and given it a fixed form. Yes. They go beyond it. Yes. As far as its self-winged airplanes could fly, Visiting the future in great brilliant raids, it reconnoitred vistas of dream fate. Again, I am reminded of two, two little poems. One of Sri Aurobindo, which is a, a poem in Bengali, but translated uh, in English, where he speaks of the Buddhist and the Vaishnavites. And he says, you think you know Krishna and you know Buddha. And then he speaks of Buddha. He says, Buddha is strong and mighty, tramples over desire. And you are just sitting with a shaven head. You know, <laughs> even Kabir spoke like that. Kesh, kesh badhai jogi ban gele bakra. <laughs> he spoke like that. <laughs> you, you think by increasing your hairs, you, have, you can realize the divine. <laughs> the divine is not measured by the size of your beard. Then in another place he says, um, to Muslims also, Kakar Patar Jodke Majid Lai Banai, Ta Chadi Mulla Bangde Kya Bera Wakudai. Imagine those days, he's saying, you have built a place to call God by assembling these bricks and mortar. Kakar Patar Jodke Majid. And from there, like a cock in the morning, you are shouting. <laughs> you think that God is deaf? Kya <laughs> Bera I mean, what a, and Shurabinda is called Guru Nanak and Kabir as great saints. Look at the iconoclasts they were, you know. <laughs> and another one which I remember is Subramanyam Bharti's poem, Kannan, My Disciple. Please read it. It's an amazing poem. It's about that, you know, he has all these ideas about morality, right, wrong, good, bad. And one day, <laughs> one... Uh, child is brought to him that is a very difficult child very mischievous can you teach him so he says okay so he starts teaching him but this child starts questioning starts now he is Krishna Kannan you know and Krishna has come to him to help him break his ideas about life it's a long poem so sweet so lovely and he tries all methods ultimately gives up and says you go I can't <laughs> And when he is in a, that state of helplessness, says, I give up. Then Kannan comes and says, okay, now give me my homework. I am going to do it. So he says, what happened? He says, because I had come to change you. I had come to shatter all these things inside you. Now my task is done. I will behave like a good boy. <laughs> it's an amazing poem. Very, very sweet and beautiful. Subramaniam Bharti. Of course, it's uh, original is Tamil. But the English translation is available. Kannan, my uh, disciple or student. It is there on Aroma. I had read this poem in Hall of Harmony. Mm. It was long back. As far as its self-winged airplanes could fly. Mm. Why? Look at it. Chavinda is putting air dash planes. Because he's not talking mm. of these airplanes. Yeah. Hyphenated, uh, self-winged yeah. and hyphenated yes. airplanes. So, I mean, there are so many suggestions in each word, self-winged, not yes. something which is yes. grafted from outside and made to prop up. Visiting the future in great, brilliant raids, it reconnoitred vistas of dream fate. Look at it, you know, uh, great, brilliant raids, as if, you know, you are going unannounced and 
drink fate it is reconnoitering it is yes. going and looking at it uh, like like a great bird app to conceive unable to attain so this is where now a gap comes in these realms mm -hmm. also they can see they can understand they can know but they do not have the power to change that was the, one of the problem with vedantic thought it can take you to great heights but the power to change this world is a different line altogether that will come later on it drew its concept maps and vision plans too large for the architecture of mortal space beyond in wideness where no footing is an imagist of bodiless ideas ideas which have not even taken the form of thoughts imagist of the bodiless of bodiless ideas impassive to the cry of life and sense a pure thought mind surveyed the cosmic act watching the works of time there are beings like that you know we are moved by small things or big things or this event that event this circumstance that circumstance it's a pure thought mind which is just watching all the events pass by what does man say when you become when you can become aware of, the whole, of world, the whole world at the same, same time, time then you can become conscious of the divine is <laughs> watching this whole play archangel of a white transcending realm so now comes this archangel archangels i think are those which arch over the angels the greater angels yes, not the, the lesser ones angels. the greater angels yeah. so i have my understanding as arching over the angels <laughs> <laughs> it makes it easy a for me way, to remember good way to remember <laughs> this, this not how it is described but i remember when i read it this is how i had understood they are warriors yeah they are warriors yes they are warriors that's right archangel of a white transcending realm it saw the world from solitary heights luminous in a remote and empty air with this we end canto 10 it's a beautiful way to start the new year we enter into canto 11 the kingdoms and godheads of the greater mind so nice close to 2018 we leave behind the little mind <laughs> we enter the greater mind with the coming year because anyways it's the year of the superman any questions any questions we can yes no question yes why did you say next year is the year of the superman oh yes um it's a good question i had deliberately not said the full thing i thought i'll keep it for the next <laughs> week but no no it's okay <laughs> yeah it would probably many persons see the many people uh, have stopped with 1956 so you see the celebration 29th february and so on and so forth but mother didn't stop with 1956 <laughs> she went forward there was a great event on 13th 14th april night in 1962 well 13 Uh, 1213 see describes that which is an amazing event which is you know has far reaching repercussion that's when she says it is done yeah. the victory has been won then another great event was even in 1958 when material nature chooses to collaborate but in 1969 1 january she speaks of the descent of the superman and initially she says that it's a new consciousness which has come and she is trying to identify with it is the supramental being but on 4th january or so she confirms it is the superman consciousness which is the intermediary between the human consciousness and the supramental being so superman will find the way you know it takes away the entire this question about who will be the guru the superman consciousness is there as a mentor the word used is benevolent mentor and guide and it will do it what is necessary to those who have turned towards mother and shivindo it will lead them to discover the ways even for the physical transformation this what shivindo says mother so, calling the surom yeah the surom that's the french word and of course there are debates on whether to call it overman or superman but I, because superman word has been consistently used by shivindo and i and this is the intermediary consciousness between the human consciousness and the 
supramental. And we see here as we go into the greater mind that actually many of the attributes of the superman we'll find it here. Yes. So 1st January 1969, so this is the golden jubilee. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody forgot in the 75th year of the school that there is a golden jubilee of such a great event. Mm. Mm. They asked Nolini um, about ah, the superman. superman. Yes. And he said, it may be you, it may even be me. <laughs> yeah, and he said he's just round the corner. The <laughs> Superman is already manifested. And he is working. And if we read through, in fact, uh, All India Magazine, January issue is on Superman. For those who want to, you know, get all the details. Precisely because it's the 50th year. I had advance notice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you had an advance notice from Nalinda. <laughs> Superman was the first book, uh, I mean, of course, synthesis I bought. But the first book I received uh, from someone, and very strangely, it's a very beautiful little story, that someone said, uh, I'll give you some book from Sri Aurobindo's uh, this thing, pulled out a book and gave to me. So I opened it and the Superman. But guess what? It's signed by Shurabindo with blessings. Oh. I said, Are you sh I, first I hesitated. Should I tell him that it's signed? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I can't just. So I told him because I know how precious. So he looked at it. He didn't know that it is signed by Shurabindo. Oh. And then he said, uh, well, now it has come to you. So it, it, I guess it has yeah. to go to you. So the first book signed by Shurabindo that I received. Superman. With oh. blessings. <laughs> oh. So you see how the Lord can work and reach out anywhere, wherever you are. Yes. Okay. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year.